had 10 kids, man. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm number eight, man. We come from the bottoms, man, and the lines are high. The reason why I said the bottoms, man, is because that it's right at the edge of Stark County and Mahoney County. We can walk across the street, you dig what I'm saying, and be in my own car, man. right, and walk across the street and be in Stark County, and you dig what I'm saying, right, and steal me on all the way. So I'm number eight, right? Uh, I'm an eight ball. I'm a real eight ball, man. I had a numerology and astrology that go with the number eight, the seen and the unseen, the light and the dark. You dig what I'm saying? When I was when I was born, when I was little, I was off the chain. I'm the one that introduced my mom had ten kids and our next door neighbor, their grandmother, they had ten kids. And this burn that's in my arm is so old that it blended in there. That that burn represents twenty one. Cause we had ten, they had eleven. And all our ages was in step with each other all the way up to all the way down. Mm -hmm. So you do so I represent fourteen brothers. I got thirteen older brothers and I got six older sisters with their family and my family. That's how we grew up. I know my mom who you had younger than you. Now, my two sisters, my baby sisters, I ain't had no baby brother. I had to adopt baby brothers. You dig what I'm saying? I am the baby brother. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the way we grew up, man, we were banging all the time, man. Mm -hmm. All the time. But anyway, that made me off the chain. So they like my wild ass. Right? <laughs> 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 that ain't brought my wild ass up. Yo, but as I was growing up, seriously, man, I had a way, man talking to the island man with the dogs and shit man and it got to the point man like it was a junkyard dog was so vicious man that down the street that we ended up going to get to that was the name of the dog man he was a husky or something else man he was ferocious but anyway so I talked to that dog and I talked to the other dog and so when I was young they called me junkyard dog when I was young they called me g -Vi. my father named Levi but I went by g -Vine so bad, I was, you know what I'm saying, I grew in my position. And sometimes they just only called me G. They called me a G when I was little. You get what I'm saying? So when I became junkyard on the street, my brothers named me junkyard. But you know, but I ended up going to Mansfield. You dig what I'm saying? Back in 1980, man. And at that time in Mansfield, you can't talk your way through it. You got to bang. You got to bang a line. And that's simple as that. But anyway, when I was in like orientation, you dig what I'm saying? And, you dig, and when it was time for me to demonstrate, after I got done, the penitentiary, them niggas, a uh, popular cook out of Youngstown, named me Junkyard. So I was named Junkyard twice. So you said, what kind of name do I go by? Well, my mom, you know, introduced me to Sheldon. You didn't want to say, but I grew into a G vibe, a G, a junkyard dog, and named a junkyard dog again. And when I was in there in the penitentiary, you didn't want to say, I met Yusuf out of Cleveland, man, and became Umar El Katalu Mahani. I had to grow into that name. That name just wasn't, I didn't just raise my hand and say, my name was Umar. No. I, my personality and the way I ran myself and conducted myself in the penitentiary, you dig what I'm saying? You know, gave me my name. You know what I'm saying? That El Cotaro is those who fight and those who kill because I'm always banging up in there. I banged up in there so I can have peace out on the store. You come to my store now, I, I got you, man. So, that's why my position was Minister of Defense, Minister of Finance. You didn't want to take care of my money. All these motherfuckers on me. You know what I'm saying? And with that money, we used that money. With all the brothers, you know what I'm saying, came around us, man, filled their locker boxes up, put money, you know what I'm saying, in their pockets. And for the first time, then they started having something. Learning something. You did know what I'm saying? But this is what happened. By the grace of God, I was so violent 
that I had caught the brunt in the penitentiary at the junkyard dog. Alright? Man, I got different shoes every day, different sweaters every day, penitentiary shark. Said plus, niggas on me. Because of that, of my position, I learned. I learned how to deal with people. I learned how to be a man among men. And I learned how to be a man of great compassion. So I went to school. Hey, Jim, you got this, Jeff. I got you, man. Hey, I got you, man. 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 That's how I grew up in the time frame. I came in at 15. Bending, bending. Bending, bending. Bending, bending. Bending, bending. With that can of car deep blunt, I can walk anywhere in this motherfucker do what the fuck I want to do. I didn't explain. I didn't want to become like that. I didn't pray upon the weak. No. I took care of them. I had to have compassion. I had to have some understanding. A lot of people owe me. I had to deal with him. I couldn't stab everybody that didn't know me. No. So I learned what happened. What happened? So yeah, I'll jump y'all down and I'll fuck your ass up. Get my money, man. Now with that money, and with that experience, so, but then it got to the point where Umar El Cotano came in, I had to go to Luke. I had to go to Luke, man. I went up in loop, man. You did want to under Yusef. See, I'm in second command. Yusef in first command. See, Yusef numbers 184 You do know, that's my number. Yusef 184 You know why I went first? Because I was in the penitentiary for a day I met Yusef. He made me. So I went to, to, to Louisville, introduced Louisville to my home. I grew up in here. The whole system. I made it. I'm baptized. I'm in Luke. Man, you up in Luke, man, ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying, two ways. That's wrong. be transpired right here in Luke. Because we've been baptized. And I made it up out of there. By the grace of God. And by the grace and the help of Yusef. With hey man, Yusef said to me one time, the greatest and the most misunderstood or the most underestimated Understanding of knowledge is the knowledge of yourself. Whew. Once you begin to understand you, everything of God has put places and people and things in the first step so you can be an example and an outshine of what He wants to say from Him to you. God Himself. We deal with God Himself. We deal with two things. Ain't then God that personally when we deal with God we in the presence of God all of his glory demons there angels there creepy crawling things there everyone praises God everyone yearn and thrive and go back to God himself the presence of so, I found myself in the presence of God. Thank God. I'm a spiritual man. Thank God. He allowed me to see things. He allowed me to grow. He allowed me to get here to say this. Thank God. This ain't no prescript. I told you, bro. You guys are wrong. Come on, this is done as old. 
Oh, well, they recoup or redo that. How? It ain't me. It's the will of God. This is how I do about the will of God. It ain't, I don't do nothing. Whatever transpired, whatever take place right before my very eyes, right before my very face, and all the tools that I have at my disposal, I deal with. And take me out. On the money I get, I share it. Just like in the picture. Because it's not mine. It's to open up the door. God has put me in a position to open up doors. Not because of me. No, because of them. They say they need to see you. Why? I said, why? Because I wrote my name a long time ago. I turned my life over. What did I turn my life over? Doing what's right. So, to do what's right. So, I am. That is so simple. I just do what's right. I don't want to do I did so much wrong, I don't want to do no more. I don't want to do no more wrong. I did all that. I'm going to do just right. Just do what's right. And what goes behind that, you know, I'm old enough, bold enough, bad enough, because God put me in that position that, that I deal with. It. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I said we roll with demons and devils, and we roll guys and the hills. Why you right now? I deal with the right. No, check out being isolated. They say, find your holy place, pray, and keep it clear. I'm telling you one part why they told you keep it clear. So when you go unconscious, when you go sleep, and they come and visit you, they in your house longer. Because ain't nobody else but you and them. When you live with somebody, they scare them away. Not you, them do. So they say, when you go to your sanctuary, you pray. They will come and stay longer with you. Next thing you know, you go. It's spiritual. You just come back into and look around and things will be consummated. Boy, is it true? And it is. <laughs> so, that's how I do it, man. I did 27 years, man. In the penitentiary, man. I started at 10. I got done, 39. Went back for three more. And I'm out here since then. And ever since then, I'm out here. I just deal with it. I ain't on parole. I've been on parole for like seven or eight years. You know? I got my own home, man. Got my house, man. But I got a lot of help through the agency. My, I got, came home the second time, the parole officer put, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, I told the parole officer, I'm done. And I was done. I just started doing what's right, man. I ain't perfect, I just started doing what's right. So I came into my home. And when I came to my home, now I cut the grass, I got an attic, I got a basement, I got two bedrooms, I got a nice yard, I got a fire pit. I cut deer grass, deer grass, deer grass, deer grass, and had two more today that they want to be on my payroll. And I don't cut grass for cheap. I ain't cheap. <laughs> hey, I tell them. They said, well, you know, I don't cut grass for 10 15 dollars. No, I don't. Who that time of what you talking about? I'm going to cut it, weed eat it, and manicure it. When I get done, your grandbabies going out there and y'all taking pictures. So he said, how much you going to do? Okay, now, okay. I said, hang on. He said, oh, no. Okay, and I walked away. They said, oh, man, you could have did that. I already got, uh, what you call, uh, that you do a paint for everybody. Clientele. Like. <laughs> yeah, I got clientele. And uh, uh, one of the uh, exhibit. You, you want to look at, look at that? I got an exhibit. I, I, need, I don't need no more. Exhibit. Is that brother still over there? Uh, the brother Samuel Muhammad, he's still doing his thing over there? Well, I seen him doing like his black thing, I'm not sure, but I just know when I pass him, it's coming. You know, this is what I felt about him. All right, check this out, John. I'm 100%. I'm going to give you 100% of the look, man, so you can see me. Then that way we can go forward. All right? 100%. My plan? 
So with black and I'm not getting him 100. percent So he said, go to Toledo with me. And go to the uh, to one room temple. The fuck I'm gonna go to the nigga. You want me to come to my house? I live right there. <laughs> I'm going to the car with you for. You want me to come to my home? Come to my home, huh? Oh, you smoke what? You smoke what? Nigga, get fucked with me. No, I'm still with you. See? I'm sure. I don't have to. How you doing? Say, I'm ready. That's my brother. Hey, you know. You've been baptized in the fire. They ain't been well, baptized. all I know is this. All I know is this. I got to give you a hundred. I got to give you a hundred. Because look, man, I got to put the back forward. That's how they play in us. Because we made it. A lot of brothers said, man, I'm going to live through you. I didn't understand it until now. They said, get out there and make it. I did it 27 years, man. They said, you weren't going to make it. I ain't supposed to made it. They said, well, lock his ass up. They let me on parole as emergency. I was under emergency status. They didn't let me off parole after 24 years. They said, Sheldon, you did a nice job. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> it just so happened. It was a fruit. They said, hey, you know, look, we kept you over 10 years that they even gave you. Man. So you in, since you in Lucasville, you can't hold on to Luke. You're going to leave Luke. you bring us up. Going home, that's what happened. And they threw me right through my blood. I was so happy. No doubt. And from there, this is what happened. It was like fire. I turned Columbus out. Man, my parole officer talking about what is you doing, Cheryl? I said, what do you mean? We got lawyers calling in on them. We got halfway houses. Everybody speaking on We want to help show. <laughs> Even though you came, they, you gave them your story and went around. So they want to post me up as a poster boy. Man, I swear God, it's a true story. They, want, they offered me a $32,000 salary. I was going to deal with the halfway house. I was going to deal with guys that come out to penitentiary. And I was going to deal with guys that smoke weed. Man, when it was time for me, because I was at poor Marvel, culture Marvel, right? You know, I got cut up too. But anyway, I was poor Marvel. You know, it was time for me to go out there and see Miss Justice. Out there, you know, with that, you know, Mercedes Benz and all that, with, with that gold hair. You know how them brides and black women do. They knew where I was from. They said, uh -huh. we know where you from. They're going to give you the whole chalada. They did, I swear to God. Franklin County, Columbus, they did. I swear to God, they did. They gave it to me so fast, so I'm like, bam! I got scared. I said, hey, hold up. <laughs> I said, I got to go to the streets. I got to feel it. There's something in the streets that was calling me. I come from the street, I come from the bottom. God was calling me from the streets. I wasn't to be put up in here. I didn't come from there. I come from Luke. So I didn't go out there. I actually got locked.